we're fortunate to be joined now by two more of our EWTN colleagues who both closely watched and reported on the consistory. Andrea Gagliarducci is the Vatican analyst for Aci Stampa, and Hannah Brockhouse is senior correspondent based in Rome for the Catholic News Agency. Thank you both for joining us. Andrea, you have made it your profession to become an expert on the Vatican. In the papacy of Pope Francis, what do you make of the timing of this extraordinary consistory when cardinals from all over the world were able to meet and talk to one another face to face? Well, this consistory was expected this year. It was not expected in August for many reasons. It's first of all a mood breaker for the Roman Curia because there is vacation in August that usually goes uh, until September at one point. And so it was strange. And then it was not traditional at all. The last consistory that took place in August was in uh, 1808, I mean uh, 19th century, and it was a secret consistory. So it was kind of strange, but it was expected. Just think that Pope Francis needed to refill uh, the number of cardinals eligible to vote in a conclave. The cardinals eligible to vote in a conclave are beyond 80. And during this year, uh, some, some 10 cardinals were going to turn 80. So the Pope needed some new cardinals. And it was expected also because Pope Francis always had a consistory every year since 2014. The only year he didn't have a consistory was 2020-21, last year, and was strange, actually was expected last year. So the timing was proper, the timing was expected, August was not expected, and that led to many speculations about what was going to happen. But as you saw, nothing happens in the end. Nothing too crazy and definitely overdue. Hannah, there was a very clear international dimension to the consistory, but just one American was named. What do viewers need to know about Cardinal Robert McElroy of San Diego? Well, Cardinal McElroy is both the newest and the youngest cardinal for the United States at just 68 years old. Uh, he is known for having a pastoral style very similar to Pope Francis. So he has uh, placed a strong emphasis on the plight of migrants, uh, for the environment, and on the homeless. He has also had a strong uh, emphasis on the synod on synodality, as that is ongoing in the Vatican and in the whole United, uh, in the whole Church. Andrea, since the cardinal discussions were broken down into language groups, were they really able to get to know each other outside of their regions? Well, it was difficult for them to know each other, although some of them were happy that they were able to meet better some of their confrères. But the real issue was not getting to know each other. Uh, it was also that, but this, uh, uh, this consistory was summoned to discuss about cure reform. And actually, there was no possibility to have a clear discussion on cure reform if not broken into groups. And all the interventions were in the end given to the secretariat because there was no possibility to have an inter all intervention altogether, which was what the cardinals wanted to do. So there was no possibility for them not even to know each other, but also to know what the other confers thought about the cure reform. That'll be an important thing to address for Pope Francis. Hannah, you interviewed the newly appointed Cardinal Lazarus Yu Hong Sik, who is from South Korea, but also serves as prefect for the dicastery for clergy. What perspective does he bring to the college? Well, of course, as the Catholic Church continues to grow in Asia, it's extremely important to have his perspective in the Vatican um, about the church in Asia and Catholics there. Uh, he also brings a perspective of um, persecuted peoples and persecuted Christians. He's visited North Korea several times, and I think that will be a very useful perspective for Pope Francis. He said in his role as prefect of the dicastery for, for clergy, he wants to encourage priests and he wants to um, help them through formation, ongoing formation, to better base their lives and their service on the word of God. So he kind of highlighted that as um, an emphasis that he's bringing to this role. Mirroring something that Pope Francis has continued to emphasize. One more question for both of you. First, Andrea, there were high expectations for this first extraordinary consistory since 2015. You talked to many people for your reporting. What has their reaction been over the last week? Well, as I said before, uh, there were expectations to be able to talk all together about the cure reform, at least to discuss some of the points of the reform. Uh, but there was no possibility, so there was some disappointment in many of the cardinals I talked to. 
they wanted to address some issues, although the cure reform is already a reality. You know, they were not summoned before the cure reform was established. Uh, some of them were happy with, uh, with the moment they, they, were, they, they, get, they had with their confrères, but, you know, it was mostly because they were able to meet together. It was, for some of them, the first consistory of this kind, and you know, that since 2015, Pope Francis has not summoned any kind of this kind of extraordinary consistory. So they were happy to make the experience. But generally, you know, there is a little disappointment and also some curiosity because they got used to Pope Francis' surprises. So they know that if nothing happened during this consistory, something will happen soon. Hmm, something will happen soon. Hannah, what are your thoughts on this? Well, of course, at the consistory to create the cardinals, there was a lot of joy, especially from people coming from the countries where uh, they received new cardinals. But I'll echo what Andrea said about kind of mixed reviews, um, uh, mixed feelings on the extraordinary consistory. Obviously, it's been seven years since they were able to all last meet together, whether these two days of meetings, this long weekend um, of encounters was able to, uh, you know, produce enough time um, and opportunity for them to really exchange ideas remains to be seen. We'll be watching for that. Thank you both for joining us to discuss this important moment in our church.